channels here on the chart, all right. And so are the marking lights. Then what's wrong with them? Those lights don't seem to be in just the right place. They're both a bit out of position, according to this. Two light boys mean a safe channel between the world over. Safe between the world over doesn't go in these waters. Look here. You'll see the water shoals on the island side, while the deep soundings run to the mainland. Have any of you seen the captain today? No, he wasn't down for dinner. No, and he wasn't down for lunch. He hasn't left the bridge since you decided to come through the channel. What are you driving at? Ever since you gave him those orders yesterday to cut through these waters, he's had the jitters. There's something wrong. Uh, you know, I'm getting nerves myself. <laughs> Doc, what do you recommend for nerves? Give him a shot of scotch. Good. Good. Give him the whole bottle. <laughs> no, no, I've got nerves too. Here you are, Doc. Just what you need. <laughs> well, uh, maybe you're right. Good evening, Captain. Good evening, sir. May I speak with you? Why, certainly. Go ahead. We're heading straight for the channel between Brank Island and the mainland. Good. But the lights are just a bit off, according to the chart. But charts are never up to date in this part of the Pacific. You know that. I know, sir, but... Doesn't Brank Island mean anything to you? Well, not a lot. Well, perhaps if I could talk with Mr. Rainsford, he... But Bob's not a sailor. He's a hunter. He's made many of these trips. He's young, but he has judgment. I'll call him. Oh, Bob. Bob. What is it? Uh, come up here, will you? Just a minute. What's bothering you, Captain? There are no more coral reef, shark-infested waters in the whole world than these. Boy, just take a look at these. You didn't turn out so hot as a hunter, Doc. But, oh, what a photographer. Say, if we'd had you to take pictures on the Sumatran trip, they might have believed my book. If you'd had me on the Sumatran trip, you'd never had me on this one. <laughs> Say, here's the swell one of the ship, Skipper. Well, what's the matter? These old sea dogs tell yarns to kid each other and end up believing it all themselves. Well, I think that Mr. Rainsford should know that the channel lights aren't just in the position given on the chart. Oh. Well, what do you think, fellas? I think we should turn back and take the outside course. Oh, no, back no, 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 no. We'll go ahead. Very well, sir. It's your ship. It was the schooner Hesperus, and she sailed the wintry sea. Now, wait a minute, fellas. Let's talk this over. There's no use taking any chances. Chances? That's fine talk coming from a fellow who just got through slapping tigers in the face. Here, get a knife full of this. And he talks about taking chances. Here's the doc charging the enemy with an unloaded camera. Get the expression on Doc's face, Bill. He looks more frightened than the tiger. He is. <laughs> Just what you have on your mind, Doc. I'll tell you what I had on my mind. I was thinking of the inconsistency of civilization. The beast of the jungle killing just for his existence is called savage. The man killing just for sport is called civilized. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit contradictory, isn't it? Now, just a minute. What makes you think it isn't just as much sport for the animal as it is for the man? Now, take that fellow right there, for instance. There never was a time when he couldn't have gotten away. But he didn't want to. He got interested in hunting me. He didn't hate me for stalking him any more than I hated him for trying to charge me. As a matter of fact, we admired each other. Perhaps. But would you change places with the tiger? Well, not now. Mm -mm. Here comes that bad luck lady again. Third time tonight. Here, let me shuffle them. Yeah, wait a minute. Don't evade the issue. Yes, come on, speak up. Now, I asked you a question. Yes. You did? Oh, I forgot. No, no, you didn't. I asked you if there'd be as much sport in the game if you were the tiger instead of the hunter. Well, what's you got you now, Bob. Well, that's something I'll never have to decide. No? Listen here, you fellas. This world's divided into two kinds of people, the hunter and the hunted. Now, luckily, I'm a hunter. Nothing can ever change that. <laughs> Those hot boilers.
everybody. Nobody left but us two. And that fellow. Anybody around, I say. Oh, hello. Is this your house? I'm not trying to break in, but I've been in a wreck. Our yacht just sunk with all hands. I got ashore and found your place here by accident. I'm not trying to intrude, but I'm in sort of a jam. Don't you understand any English? Ivan does not speak any language. He has the misfortune to be dumb. Oh, hello. Are you the owner here? Yes. Welcome to my poor fortress. Fortress? It once was, built by the Portuguese centuries ago. I have had the ruins restored to make my home here. I am Count Zaroff. My name's Robert Rainsford. Glad to meet you. Very glad. <laughs> yeah, Ivan is a Cossack. I am afraid, like all my fellow countrymen, he is a bit of a savage. Smile, Ivan. Ulidnis! I was trying to make him understand there'd been a shipwreck in the channel. 
Short was me, but how appalling. And you mean to say that you were the only survivor? Yes. I'm afraid I am. You're certain? Well, I'd never left the spot if I hadn't been. The swellest crowd on earth. My best friends. It's incredible. Yeah, uh, such things are always incredible. Uh, death is for others, not for ourselves. Uh, that is how most of my other guests have felt. Your other guests? You mean this has happened before? My dear fellow, we have several survivors from the last wreck still in the house. It would seem that this island were cursed. That's just what the captain said. Only he thought it was uninhabited. Yeah, uh, we Cossacks find our inspiration in solitude. Well, it's a break for me anyway. <laughs> My house is yours, sir. Oh, by the way, uh, you'll want to change those wet rags immediately. Yes, they look about the way I feel. <laughs> yes, I have some loose hunting clothes which I keep for my guests that you can possibly get into. What vidi evolve crane you come to? Ivan will show you to your room. Thank you. You will find a stiff drink there also. Thanks a lot. Rashu, all pleasure is mine. All set. I'm afraid we have finished dinner, but I have ordered something for you. Thanks. I don't feel like eating. Oh, dear, dear. Well, perhaps later. Now then, what do you say to coffee and most charming company? It is hard to forget your comrade's fate, I know. But our feminine guest is easily perturbed. If I could beg you to put a good face upon the matter, uh, assume a cheerfulness you may not feel. Why, sure, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Miss Trowbridge, may I present Mr. Robert Rainsford, Miss Eve Trowbridge. How do you do? How do you do? And her brother, Mr. Martin Trowbridge. How are you, old chap? Pretty well shaken up, I guess, huh? Coming out of it now, thanks. We know just how it feels, don't we? Indeed, we do. Perhaps Mr. Rainsford would like some hot coffee. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, Mr. Rainsford, please sit here. Oh, thank you. Digos to coffee vodka. Vodka, that's the stuff. One shot will dry out quicker than all the coffee in Java. Have to toss it off, though, like this. Now, Martin, you don't have to drink it all tonight, do you? Don't be ridiculous, sis. We are victims of circumstance. Same as Mr. Rainsford. And if anyone has a right to his liquor, it's a victim of circumstance. Isn't that so, Count? Of course, yes. You were in the shipwreck, too, I understand. Yes. Our lifeboat was the only one saved. My brother and I and two sailors. The Count found us on the beach with nothing but the clothes on our backs. <laughs> Those channel lights must have been shifted. I wonder it hasn't been reported. Well, we'll report them. Just as soon as we get back to the mainland. You see, the Count has only one launch. And that's... Under repair. Uh, Russians are not the best mechanics. I'm afraid we'll have to be patient a few days longer. That's all right with me. I feel as if I were living on borrowed time right now. Uh, speaking of that, perhaps now you'll tell us a little bit about who you are. Just sketchily, you know. Born, married, why I left my last job. No, 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 no. One moment, please. Mr. Rainsford need never explain who he is in my house. No? No, we entertain a celebrity, Miss Trowbridge. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't tell me. Let me guess. I know. Flagpole sitter. Oh, flagpole sitter. <laughs> I know. He wrote some books. No, he lived some books. If I am not mistaken, this is Mr. Robert Rainsford, who hunts big game so adventurously. Yeah? Yes, to you. I've lugged a gun around a little. I've lugged a gun around a little. No, I have read your books. I read all books on hunting. A uh, papyrosu? Thank you. 
Only in yours have I found a sane point of view. What do you mean, sane? Cigarette? Hmm? Yeah, thanks. You do not excuse what needs no excuse. Now, let me see, how did you put it? Hunting is as much a game as stud poker, only the limits are higher. You have put our case perfectly, Mr. Rainsford. Well, then you're a hunter yourself. We are kindred spirits. It is my one passion. <laughs> he sleeps all day and hunts all night. And what's more, Rainsford, he'll have you doing the same thing. We'll have capital sport together, I hope. Don't encourage him. You know, he's had our two settlers so busy chasing around the woods after flora and fauna that we haven't seen him for three days. But what do you hunt here? I'll tell you. You will be amused, I know. I have done a rare thing. I have invented a new sensation. Yeah, and is he stingy with it? What is this sensation, Count? Mr. Rainsford. God made some men poets, some he made kings, some beggars. Me, he made a hunter. My hand was made for the trigger, my father told me. He was a very rich man with a quarter of a million acres in the Crimea and an ardent sportsman. When I was only still up high, he gave me my first gun. Good for him. My life has been one glorious hunt. It would be impossible for me to tell you how many animals I have killed. But when the revolution played up... Oh, look out. Vitry, stop. Oh, I'm so sorry. Count Zaraf was so interesting, I didn't realize the danger. Oh, it's all right now. What were you saying about the revolution, Count? Oh, merely that I escaped with most of my fortune. Naturally, I continued to hunt all over the world. It was in Africa that the Cape Buffalo gave me this. That must have been a close call. Yes, it, it still bothers me sometimes. However, in, a, in two months I was on my way to the Amazon. I'd heard that the Jaguars there were unusually cunning. No, no, no. No sport at all. Well, conditions are bad everywhere these days. One night as I lay in my tent with this this head of mine. A terrible thought crept like a snake into my brain. Hunting was beginning to bore me. Is that such a terrible thought, Count? It is, my dear lady, when hunting has been the whip for all other passions. When I lost my love of hunting, I lost my love of life. Of love. Well, you seem to have stood it pretty well. I even tried to sink myself to the level of the savage. I made myself perfect in the use of the Tartar Warbo. Tartar which? Tartar Warbo. <laughs> that one up there. That's cute. Even to this day, I prefer to hunt with it. But alas, even that was too deadly. What I needed was not a new weapon, but a new animal. A new animal? Exactly so. You found one? Yes. Here on my island, I hunt the most dangerous game. The most dangerous game? You mean tigers? Tigers? No. The tiger has nothing but his claws and his fangs. I heard some queer beast howling back there along the water. Was that it? It's no use, Rainsford. He won't tell. He won't even let you see his trophy room till he gets ready to take you on the hunt of the great what's it? <clears throat> my one secret. I keep it as a surprise for my guests against the rainy day of boredom. Listen, old boy, you let me in on that game and I'll bet you I'd go for it. You know, Rainsford, he hasn't failed yet. If he says the thing is good, it is good. He's a judge of liquor, wizard at a contract, Plays the piano, anything you want. He's a good host. And a good scout, eh, Count? Yes, yes. 
You want me to go hunting? All right, you just say the word. We're pals. We'll have a big party, get cockeyed, and go hunting. <laughs> a completely civilized point of view. Now listen, I'll tell you what you do. You come to my place in the Adirondacks sometimes, see? We'll have a private car, liquor and gals on the trip, and the guides will make the deers behave. <laughs> yeah, I think we'd better change the subject. All right. Change the subject. Oh, I know. Play the piano, huh? If you wish. Good idea. Play the piano. Now leave it to me and I'll fix everything. Perhaps the Count doesn't want to play. Now there you go, sis. Throwing cold water. Now leave me alone. I know where the piano is. I'm perfectly sober. <laughs> A charming simplicity. Completely civilized, did you say? Yeah, he talks of wine and women as a prelude to the hunt. We barbarians know that it is after the chase and then only that man revels. Yeah, it does seem a bit like cocktails before breakfast. Of course, yes. You know this saying of the Ogandi chieftains. Hunt first the enemy, then the woman. That's the savage's idea everywhere. Yeah, it is the natural instinct. What is woman? Even such a woman as this, until the blood is quickened by the kill. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you Americans. One passion builds upon another. Kill. Then love. When you have known that, you will have known ecstasy. Oh, Martin. Introducing Zaroff, the keyboard king, in his Brank Island hour. Come on, Count, now you're shown. What do you suggest? Oh, just a good tune, but not highbrow like last night. Just a good tune, see? I see. Yeah. Keeping you from returning to the mainland? Yes. Well, perhaps he enjoys the company of two very charming people. Two, maybe. There were four of us a week ago. The other two have disappeared. What do you mean? One night after dinner, the Count took one of our sailors down to see his trophy. At the foot of those stone steps. That iron door? Yes. Two nights later, he took the other there. Neither has been seen since. Have you asked him about them? He says they've gone hunting. Oh, be careful. He's watching us. Will you smile as if I've said something funny? <laughs> now, look here. You must be mistaken. Not now. This... Applaud. Ah, boy, ah, boy. Mm. Thank you. What did I tell you? Smack some in ivory, eh, Rainsford? It was splendid. Don't stop, please. Now, I'm afraid we have failed to hold the full attention of our audience. Well, I... I expect it's rather difficult for Mr. Rainsford to concentrate on anything after all he's been through. Oh, my dear lady, you are pleading for yourself. I can see the drooping of those lovely eyes. Excuse me. Provadeo Navarre. You know, the Count's worse than a family governess. Every night he sends us off to bed like naughty children. Oh, no, my dear. No. Charming children. There. You hear that, sis? Now try along upstairs and don't bother us grown-ups anymore. Well, after that, I guess... I guess I'll have to go. Good night, Mr. Rainsford. Good night. We'll be seeing each other at breakfast. Good night. Good night. All right, sis, we won't be seeing each other at breakfast. Oh, my dear Rainsford, I have been most inconsiderate. You must be feeling the need of sleep, too. Yes, I am just about all in. Then Ivan will show you to your room. Oh, do you come to the door? Oh, Martin, turn in early, please. Don't worry. The car will take care of me, all right. I shall.
Well, good night. Good night, sir. Sleep well. Oh, well, here's long life. A long life. Tell me, Mr. Trowbridge, are you also fatigued? Tired? Me? <laughs> you know I'm not. You know, Rainsford, we two are just alike. Up all night and sleep all day. <laughs> well, good night. Well, what are we going to do, huh? What's the big idea? I thought that perhaps tonight you would like to see my trophy room. Your trophy room? I'm sure you will find it most interesting. Say, that's a great idea. Oh, now we're pals. No more secrets now, huh? We'll make a night of it. I hope so, Mr. Trowbridge. Just you and I, pals. We'll have fun together, huh? Precisely, yes. Fun together. Ah, oh, boy, Connie, old oh boy, old oh boy, Connie. <laughs> somewhere with a count. That's just what I'm afraid of. Count Zarath is planning something about my brother and me. You don't really think anything's happened to your brother? Oh, I don't know, but we've got to find him. Won't you help me? Well, of course I'll help you. Where do you think he's gone? Where did the others go? The iron door. I'll meet you downstairs in five minutes. Thank you. Hello, Jevo. Naska Michel. Where's my brother? Where's Tomich? Where's my brother? Ah! 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 
Ricky, get your number. Ah! 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 
midnight and sunrise tomorrow, freedom for both of you. I'm going with you. No. He'll kill you too. Not at all. One does not kill a female animal. If you lose, I can easily recapture her alive. All right. I'll take her with me then. We'll set him a trail he'll remember. It's only fair to advise you against Fog Hollow. Outdoor chess, Mr. Rainsford. Don't lose your nerve. We beat this thing. The others didn't. We will. Let's get going. Miles. Yeah. Well, three hours doesn't take you far in this jungle. Come on, let's keep going. Come on. Just a little more of this, then easy downhill going. Soon be safe. No wonder he was so sure. This island's no bigger than a deer park. Oh, Bob! Come on, now. What are we going to do? We didn't each live through a shipwreck to let this crazy manhunter worry us. I shouldn't have come with you. You might beat him if you were alone. Alone? And leave you here with that savage? Not a chance. Now, we've got to think of something to worry him. Oh, you'd never get near him. He'd shoot on sight. Weapons aren't everything in the jungle. Say, did you notice that leaning tree down there? The one we just passed? Yes. Come on, I want to show you something. You see? If that supporting branch were cut away, this fallen tree would make a perfect melee deadfall. A melee deadfall? What's that? A man-killing contraption that natives use. Stop that madman, all right. Trouble is, it takes quite a few hours to build. He said he wouldn't follow till midnight. That's right. If you help me, I think we'll have time. Come on, we'll cut some strong vines. There. Almost ready. The bracelet of yours makes a fine guide ring for my necktie. He'll have been on his way almost an hour now. Look out. Don't touch that trip line. You'll have a two-ton tree down on your back. Jungle woods as heavy as iron. Will it really work? I've never known a living thing to get by one yet. Look here. You touch that trip line, you pull that trigger free. Once that's loose, there's nothing to keep the log from coming down. It'll crash down and kill anything underneath it.
something. You never even feel it. But surely you don't think that anyone who has hunted leopards would follow you into that ambush? Oh, very well. If you choose to play the leopard, I shall hunt you like a leopard. He'd hunt us as he'd hunt a leopard. It means he's gone for his high powered rifle. His rifle? Oh, Bob, we must get away from here. Run, run. Eve, wait. your watch. Are you looking at it? Still half an hour till sunrise. Swamp or no swamp, we can keep ahead of them that long. As you are doubtless saying, the odds are against me. You have made my rifle useless in the fog. You cannot blame me if 
I overcome that obstacle.
Ahmed, Miss Trowbridge, bring her here. Now. My dear Rainsford, I congratulate you. You have beaten me. Not yet. Oh, but of course I insist. Why, your... You're not even wounded. You hit the dog, not me. I took a chance and went over with him. A clever trick, Rainsford. I cheerfully admit defeat. Here's the key of the boathouse. The door is in the trophy room. You and Miss Trowbridge may leave at once. No! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 